take care of you guys. <laughs> so I'm going to start with you. I'm going to ask uh, just for you one minute about where you work and what's the mission quickly for everybody to know about each company that you represent. Uh, first, uh, thank you GBB for the invitation. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, my name is Andrew. I work with King Abdullah Economic City. It's one of the first giga projects to ever be launched uh, in the kingdom back in 2006. Uh, it was a dream to establish a new city with uh, all components for uh, the traffic change and how cities are perceived in the kingdom. Uh, King Abdullah Economic City has uh, four to five major components that play into their development. We have the city side, pristine beaches, uh, world-class uh, port for shipping, and an industrial valley with a special economic zone. Um, mainly, these are the four main drivers that, inshallah, will be, uh, will be driving the development of uh, almost 190 kilometers. I leave it to you. Ahmed. My name architect, urban designer, academician. At the same time, I'm working as a research and development is the director and engineering affairs director in Somalia State Company. Somalia State Company is one of the uh, pioneers company who are interested in real estate in Saudi Arabia who was uh, an office for a real estate for about 10 years ago. Now we are in the stock market of Saudi Arabia with uh, projects exceeded more than 130 million square meters are developed. That's deep. Thank you, Joe. Hi, everyone. I'm Nadi Pandra. I'm the Vice President of Planning and Development, and been with Alula for about five years. Um, I think we've got the privilege in Alula to be working on the most stunning locations, not very far from Leonjo. Um, and I think the, the ambition that we're working towards is to create a living museum, but at the same time making sure that we are going to be delivering to the community. Because out of all the GIGA projects, we have the privilege to work with the people, plan with the people, not around them. So I think that's, that's the passion that we work with. Thank you. Tariq, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Tariq Nabilsi. I'm the CEO for Development Projects for Abdullah Al-Fayyad Investment Company. It's a privately owned family in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We are known for our retail shopping centers across the kingdom and we're currently moving into the development of mixed use projects. Currently we're developing over 10 million square meters of projects across the kingdom, uh, including uh, residential, uh, hospitality, uh, serviced sorry, serviced apartments, as well as our retail uh, component, which is the malls being the anchor of, of all of these developments. Thank you. Amr, I'm going to start with you that uh, Saudi Arabia was what they've been doing in the last eight years. Where do you see it at the global level? Because now here we're pushing the bar. So the real estate in Saudi Arabia and the competition, where does it stand? And what do you think are the strengths of such uh, market as a Saudi Arabia and the future of it. Well, um, we're still making making our way through to become a global destination, a relevance at least. Um, with the pipeline and the amount of uh, attractiveness that is uh, that is currently being pushed by uh, all the real estate developments happening, uh, I believe uh, within within a few years' time we will uh, hold a uh, place among the top five to seven destinations globally uh, and with the deliverables of uh, projects such as uh, New Red Sea, uh, 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 it, will, it, it will provide that uh, justification of holding, holding that place. Uh, now these strengths uh, are always driven by uh, the importance of Saudi Arabia among the uh, Arab and Islamic world first <coughs> and most recently uh, the importance that is still gaining a lot of momentum uh, on the, the rest, the rest of the world. Uh, I believe uh, it's, uh, it's been a long time coming and uh, we are, we are on, on the right path to touch it. That's good. Ahmed, I came to know that you used to be private company and no longer private now. You're a listed company. So, 
from their side as a government entity and as a private company where you see uh, the potential why in Saudi Arabia and how you see the same like at the global level you as a real estate developer where you're gonna push the bar uh, I believe that Saudi Arabia rapidly emerging a global real estate with the other com countries knowing that now in Saudi Arabia we have like generators for development in terms of sites and cities and zones and one of the main interests that we are interested in I mean some more real estate that we can if we have any affiliation with those mega projects or, or those generators for development when, once we are talking about development, it means that community development. For example, when we are talking about, for example, Neom. Now, Neom now it's a new destination as a development, but at the same time, they are they, and the government trying to attract community people to create a sustainable model in terms of economy, in terms of social, socially, and also in terms of uh, 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 attract people to come and even companies and investors to, to, to work there. Thank you, Ahmad. Navdeep, Al-Ula. Most of us, we look at Al-Ula and we see it from the images, it's in the middle of nowhere. That's where the habitat is. Tell us why Al-Ula. Well, Al-Ula, you know, just to give a bit of context around where it is, it's Again, you know, one of the largest uh, footprints in Saudi Arabia. It's got 22 square thousand kilometers of developable area. Again, when I say developable, there is our nature reserves are our you know biggest asset. That's almost the size of Belgium. It's a country, so it's massive in its presence. Stunning landscapes. You know, it's got the most beautiful, and I'm not biased. You must travel to see it yourself. Stunning landscapes. So when I landed five years ago. I was actually taken back with the beauty that it's got to offer. It's got uniqueness in terms of its master plans. It's got you know, diversity when you travel from one destination to the other, and I can give you a bit of context about it. We've got five master plans, and the first master plan, which is called Journey Through Time, and it really is Journey Through Time. When you travel through the five huts, you actually are taken from the Nabataeans, how the Nabataeans lived in the old town, up to Hegra, which is the first UNESCO World Heritage listed site in Saudi Arabia. You know, that, that's a jewel on the crown of Saudi Arabia. When you look at the master plan too, which we call the path to prosperity, we've got our communities there. There's about 44,000 people living there, and we're gonna increase that population to 122,000. So, you know, we're not just building a destination for tourism or be on the top in the world and one of the best destinations, but also building a community, a self-sustainable city where people are able to have jobs. You know, it's a 15-minute city that we've got the concept on, um, a sustainability charter, so everything is done in a very managed and a sustainable way. And, um, and also trying to preserve, which is 70% of our land is nature reserves. So not just building for the development, but ensuring that regenerating and renaturalizing the landscape for people to see how it was thousands of years ago. It's got like 200,000 years of heritage, not just below ground, but above ground. So it's uniqueness and you know, I can't stop. You'll have to stop me. The I'm not gonna stop you, but I'm gonna ask you, yeah. why? it's not that exposed? Look, I think in terms of exposure, it's, it's actually taken on a lot of branding over the last two years. It has taken its time, but it's just, you know, over the, the last month, we had our uh, global uh, branding marketing, which was out in about 12 different countries in the world. So the destination marketing team was taking Kulula to all these different destinations where people are able to see it. We were in Davos uh, a few months ago in the World Economic Forum. And you know, it's one of the best platforms to be bringing Alula to the world. And I could see the, the passion, how people come and see, well, where is this located? You know, They just knew about Sedona, but no one knew where Alula is. So I think it is opening up to the market. It has actually taken the branding very seriously. And our destination marketing team is, is doing an incredible job at that. That's good. We hope you start seeing some stuff. Tarek, 
we call you the retail guru or what you want me to call you. Uh, what's impressive is that usually they bring a model from somewhere else to develop it in Saudi Arabia. From our discussion, I started to understand that you cannot take your local model and go international. So do you think this is the strategy to push the bar and then the competition at the global level? Look, um, just to take a little bit of a, of a background about Al Hussein. Uh, Al Hussein as a, as a family started out as a retail in uh, consumer goods. Then they went into supermarkets. Today we are we own around 12 shopping centers. We're the second largest GLA operator across the kingdom. Currently, with the developments on hand by uh, start of 2027, we will have 1.8 million of cross leaseable here. Uh, one of the strategies of the of the firm today is that not only we uh, build shopping centers. Uh, part of the strategy is also to own and operate other verticals, whether it's entertainment, uh, owning brands, F&B, uh, outdoor, indoor entertainment, uh, as well as hospitality. Now we went into the development of our own hotels. We currently have 2,000 rooms under development. We're also adding another 5,000 service apartments. On top of within the development of these mixed-use projects, we are being very creative at the design and the sustainability of the design. Uh, we're very focused in creating uh, a distinguished architectural uh, facade of projects whereby whenever we plug them in cities across the kingdom and eventually as we are expanding uh, internationally, that people will visit us, they know from the architecture and the facade of it, you know, this is al we're coming to al development and that's uh, the vision that uh, our chairman and uh, the rest of our stakeholders are uh, putting through. So you're the next hero. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> I'll go back to you. I'm going to ask a common question. We're, we're building all these projects and developments. Are they properly catered for the local community and at the same time in contradiction we're calling for investors from somewhere else, uh, population to come from somewhere else. I know my questions, they're gonna be a little bit tough, but we really need to answer because this is people where they, they need that confidence to really understand. So, how much your projects are passepartout? They can be uh, suitable for the local community and the culture that is changing. At the same time, it does suit anybody that's coming from outside. Sure. Uh, Is it a bad question? No, it's, it's an excellent question, actually. <laughs> because um, over the course of the past five years, I believe, the function of real estate development have, uh, have evolved in itself. Uh, how it's perceived and uh, what's being put into the uh, market pipeline uh, is a lot more conscious of uh, the consumers and uh, what the market feedback is, rather than going by whatever worked in the past should be able to work now. Uh, this consciousness actually created the, the, the wider spectrum of uh, products, of uh, approaches, of uh, technologies, and uh, how these are being uh, employed and promoted within, within the, the local real estate market. Now, the change in, in uh, socioeconomics and the change in uh, uh, the social structure of uh, the different regions in the kingdom remains also a main driver of how real estate developers will actually choose and determine uh, what they want to do. Uh, today, this consciousness has actually also expanded to accommodate for global products. Um, you have to have a defined direction initially. You cannot have a one-size-fits-all, especially in real estate. Uh, but yes, that's, that remains in mind, and with the approach on changing the regulations for uh, foreign ownership, this remains uh, an opportunity and under, under the radar for the uh, for real estate developers. Thank you. Ahmed, you reckon waiting for the regulations to come on board, does it gonna affect your progress or the destination, the communities? Is it gonna be more catered for the local market or are you gonna take into consideration what's gonna happen in five, six years maybe? Okay, maybe I can I can explain something that actually we use it in 
in our real estate company that we have our uh, in-house uh, architecture and urban urban studio, urban design studio. And actually, we have created like uh, uh, evaluation system just to have like forecasting, starting from resources, start uh, passing through the social link and local environment and the integration of the local environment and the activation of this community, types of community. And actually with this type of evaluation or regulation, it's like in internal regulations, actually we came up with a quantitative analysis that helps us to understand any opportunity that we are working on and anywhere in Neom or in the south of Saudi Arabia or in the center of Saudi Arabia without any uh, subjectivity. Because actually we have always debate between the architects and the uh, developers or the, the finance uh, department. Always we have this debate in terms of numbers. Architects always have the passion is to create the, the social or the community with all sustainability uh, uh, topics. At the same time we have the, uh, in the other side people are looking always for numbers and how we can get the maximum and the exit point sometimes as soon as we possible uh, as soon as possible so we have created like a, a, a balanced system to create and have the forecast for any opportunities knowing that now in Saudi Arabia we are in the Eldorado of the of the real estate developers because we have the booming in terms of projects uh, even in terms of attraction points I mean the the attraction projects that we have right now. Uh, at the same time, uh, we are trying to create a metaverse. I mean, real city. Uh, sorry, sorry, meta meta city, real city. At the same time, we have a target to create three uh, metropolitan cities: uh, Jeddah, Al Khobar, and in the future, Al Medina. Thank you, Ahmad. Abdib, hello. hello. It's very special location, as you mentioned, and you're working at the urban level. Are they going to keep it as a touristic destination, limited, or is going to open up due to it, due like the whole master plan that you're developing? Are you taking into consideration the way it's going to open in the future, or is going to be limited? Look, I think the, the forward planning for Rulingla was, uh, was a very structured way how we started. So the very first thing we did about five years ago was create a framework plan, which is pretty much a structured plan across the county to see what is that we want to get to, you know, what are our ambitions and how we get there. So that's really the baseline of, you know, putting out there what is the total urban, you know, development uh, perimeter that we would want to be developing. And we don't want to go beyond that the total number of visitors that we want to be aiming for, um, the community, how we want to be reaching to that number. But at the same time, this framework plan had 12 guiding principles. And talking about these guiding principles, I think at that time, they were very forward-looking. You know, they talked about, of course, managing the, the cultural and, and uh, natural heritage, but also ensuring that the circular economy and sustainability are looked at. At the same time, also looking at the socioeconomics because community is the core. You know, there are people who've been living there for hundreds of years and, you know, we have to give back to them. We want to retain them. We want to be building, as I said, around them, not taking them out and, you know, trying to build a new community. That's really a lula. They are a lula. So for us, it was a little bit difficult to put that out in the, in the you know, in the start of the project, but that helped a lot because that is really the, the guiding principles which support with every time there is a new development, what is the policy behind it? What are the guidelines that would deliver that? And the numbers, I think, around the, the development model always help when you're doing a city. When I've done it in, in Australia, when we were doing the Western Sydney, this was being developed in Abu Dhabi. When we did that, um, you know, 2008, we did Yas in Saadia, and it was reclaiming all the land, but there was no very clear numbers, there was an ambition. But in Alula, because the place is unique and it's got a very limited area that you can develop, those numbers were thought of very early on by the senior leadership. Tariq, we all know in the region, like when we were designing the address hotel 
many years ago. It was 64 floors building, but the building code was for ground plus eight. And it was a debate always with authorities to try to convince them that the ground plus eight building codes cannot be applied on 64 floors. How you feel that the changes that are happening very fast, very fast, and I don't think that you have enough resources for each area in Saudi Arabia because Saudi Arabia geographically is quite big. And each one it must have its own character and its own building codes. Do you feel that the building codes and the authorities' approval, they're slowing you or there is like a push to move fast? Very interesting question. Uh, today, given the vision 2030, there's, a, there's been uh, an increase from uh, the local uh, municipality as well as Momra, which is the Ministry of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, of what we call development in, uh, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, has been pushing to give, uh, to fast track uh, building licenses. Yes, there is a building codes that you need to, uh, to adhere to. There is third Certain provinces have certain code, with them, whether it's in uh, Asir or in the eastern province. You take it, you, you pick it up in the development of the project itself. But in terms of getting the right permits, the right uh, approvals, uh, the support of the local government, whether it is in the eastern province or in the western province, especially if you are developing uh, what we what we consider as large scale developments, i.e. A project of value in excess of uh, four or five hundred million reals, you always get the support of the local municipalities because the intent there is to the development there will always increase the potential value of having uh, jobs, creating jobs, improving on uh, the economic uh, uh, status of that of, of each area. Uh, we target uh, tier one, tier two, tier three cities across the kingdom. And whenever we go and we say we want to build a project, whether it's through ownership of the land or whether it is through public-private partnership with the local government there, we are always facilitated by giving us exceptions, uh, increased uh, GFAs to build on. Uh, of course, you have to run, like, like, like everybody say, your own HPUs, make sure the, the feasibility study stacks up, you get the CFO on board on the numbers because at the end of the day it is a cost you need to spend. But uh, in, re in reality, uh, on, on the ground and what we're seeing, it's a complete shift from what it used to be. I believe uh, the vision 2030, the, the people behind that vision, the empowerment that they're giving the local government is uh, easing or opening up for uh, local investment as well as foreign investment into, into, into the kingdom. And I strongly believe that once the ownership, the foreign ownership law is passed, I think what we're seeing today, in my opinion, is probably 20% of what the future is. And uh, I think uh, uh, there was a very important uh, quote a couple of months ago. It was trending all over the, all over the world. Uh, uh, Drop everything, learn Arabic, and move to Saudi Arabia. They're going to be creating millionaires there. And I think this is going to be true. Uh, there is so much opportunity. Uh, people underestimate what Saudi Arabia is. It's a continent. Uh, I was in Tabuk a couple of months ago. I was on the beach. Two hours later, I was up in the mountain with a 25 degrees difference. So where can you where can you see that in a virgin country where you can the development is is open to? I don't know you can dream. That's all I can say. So with the innovation and the morning session about AI and about the metaverse and uh, I believe all of us we're talking about the same and we're trying to push the bar and we don't know some of us we don't know where we're going where, what's what's gonna happen so it's up to you all now to just like who would like to tell me how you're taking the innovation to consideration how it is helping you to start investing in the research and development for your own development or at the moment it's just make money Joe, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I start? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so, uh, again, as an architect, as an also urban designer, 
we are always trying to be rational to create the space for the community at the same time with the uh, rapid development that actually we are, we are seeing uh, even in the university because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working in the university and I see the development uh, in terms of the softwares and uh, tools that help students to go further and further in terms of innovation and creativity. Sometimes actually we learn from our students those uh, softwares and technologies uh, to, to come up with uh, new ideas or with, uh, uh, with innovative, uh, I, I mean architecture or, or urban design. So we, are used, so we started actually to use these types of uh, technology, just, but to evaluate our concept or our fingerprint. Because I, I believe that each architect urban designer has his own fingerprint, but at the same time he wants to, to implement those uh, or these, these fingerprints with technologies or with uh, innovative uh, tools. So we are using it, for example, to, to evaluate the urban fabric, so for example, like syntax analysis or parametric design, like uh, we have seen it uh, in the morning, uh, just to ensure that the, our, our, um, our concept or, our, or architecture uh, reach, or uh, uh, I mean reach the target that we are looking for in terms of the financial uh, studies. Yeah. Um, you keep pointing at me for <laughs> you, you know I usually give the yeah. time on, on the feasibilities and, uh, and the debt. Um, well, that, it's, it's no fun always sticking to the book. Uh, and um, you, we, we always try to find that place space where we can push the bar and have something uh, crazy to try out. Um, when the canvas is big enough and uh, you build up the courage to do something different, uh, well, you succeed, you will be uh, the first to do it. You fail, you save the few people from trying themselves and you become the example of uh, not trying that again. Uh, so yes, uh, innovation is uh, quite important and it's, uh, it's, um, it's a main driver to set yourself or uh, uh, you know, have that definitive mark to, to, be, to be different among a lot, a lot that's happening. At I believe there's a lot to do in there. And uh, we can feel it in GCC, like uh, many countries, they're trying to create the uh, Minister of AI and then try to apply it everywhere and we'll see how it's going to move. Nadim, you've been four or five years on the ground there. Yeah. And, and I think in terms of what you're saying, Joe, I want to take a little different twist to the question. For me, it's not just about technology or AI, it's about the innovative strategies that we use. You know, what we're doing in Alula is is kind of unique because the first time we've done a socio-economic master plan, and you know, just going back to what you were just saying, an architect or an urban designer wants to leave the mark. The mark is for the people there. So the community that's going to be living there, how would it be a self-sustainable city? Would they have the right jobs there? If it's just a tourist destination, it's going to be a ghost town for six months. And how do you do that is what these strategies bring. So. Just a few examples on how these innovative strategies are being brought in Alula. We want to bring the farmers back. So there's a huge valley, it's about 20 kilometers off an urban oasis that runs through the city and the, you know, the heritage area. And we are renaturalizing that. We want to be bringing the farmers there and there is an institute or it's, it's not-for-profit institute. It's called the Cultural Oasis Agriculture Entities Corp or CORC where they will be supporting the farmers with innovative ways of doing farming, sustainable ways of managing water, being able to take their produce from there to the world market, slow food farms, so from farm to table, and that's the experience that people want to come and see, and they've got the jobs right there. We've got a little community that we're building, so people who are being expropriated from heritage areas, they're going to be moved to this community, which is we're calling it Aldira, which is a small town that we're building, is an agribusiness town. So that will have research, that will have agriculture farms, that will help them to be doing research, so getting jobs there, but also producing moringa, which is you know one of the very unique um, uh, farming produce that's formed there. The dates in that location are you know some of the best in Saudi Arabia, and then taking them from there to the airport and taking it to the world in 24 hours. 
You know, there is an example of Dar Tentura, which is one of the, the latest hotels that's been done in, in Alula, which is in the heritage, core of the heritage area in Old Town. That was done by um, Fatima Shiri, you know. I, I really love their work, what they've done. And architecture digest called that as a master stroke in regenerative architecture. So using the mud bricks, creating you know, a location that is again an eco uh, boutique hotel, but using the artwork in that hotel from an institution, a medium um, enterprise, where the local ladies of Alula actually do art. So, uh, you know, showcasing their work there. So that's, that's utilizing what Alula is on the world ground or, you know, on the table. So I think using these technologies and, you know, innovation in terms of bringing the socioeconomics out to the world is more important than going and, you know, showcasing AI. Of course, we are looking at a lot of uh, innovative ways in technology. We've got a digital technology team. But for us, we're more passionate about that because Alula is all about heritage and culture and the people. Thank you. We're running out of time, but... Uh... 2029 Winter Games, Vision 2030, Expo, World Cup, Mega Projects, 400 by 400 tall buildings, Moraba and other, other big projects. For all of you, what's next? Um, you can say it. <laughs> I, I would say the sky is the limit, but I believe uh, we to, we're, we're also making our way to the sky too. So the space program is already inaugurated and uh, actually the sky is no longer the limit. That's good. Ahmed? What's next? Already what's on the table is big. Yeah. I think the next will be not the physical, I mean projects, maybe investing on people. Interesting. Sorry. Our plan is to complete our current project. I have 10 million being developed. I've just got off a call a couple of hours ago with another two and a half million added. So we, we do have a lot on our plate. And like I said before, uh, the opportunities to develop in Saudi Arabia is, is, is phenomenal. Um, but I do concur, I think we need to start investing more into the people. Uh, training, education, that's very important. Uh, next comes healthcare. Also the innovation into healthcare is also very important. Uh, schooling, education, uh, attracting uh, universities, world-class universities, world-class uh, healthcare to come into the country is also uh, an imminent uh, opportunity that needs to be dragged into this uh, to Saudi Arabia and uh, it's an interesting time. Uh, I moved to Saudi Arabia in 2016. Before that I've been living uh, a good part of my life in, 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 in Abu Dhabi and Dubai and I always tell my children it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting concept that I got to see a small city become a metropolitan or cosmopolitan city and uh, fast forward hopefully I'll live long enough to see Riyadh become another cosmopolitan uh, success, similar to how Dubai has succeeded, but it will be 10 times, if not 100 times, bigger. And, uh, I think, like I said, uh, the future is very bright, and uh, the opportunities are there, and whoever gets there quicker will be the first to ride the, the wave of success. That's good. Nabdeep, last word for you. Look, I think realizing these projects, you know, there's so much ambition out there. We want to see it now on ground. So that's going to be, you know, changing the image of Saudi Arabia. It's, it's done so much in terms of planning. You know, world-class architects, what you just showed today, Joe, is, is phenomenal. You don't see it anywhere else in the world. And, you know, from my experience in planning, you do plans, you write them. It takes years to realize them. Saudi Arabia and, and actually Dubai Abu Dhabi has been the same. You do the plans, you see them next year, on ground. So what we were planning three years ago, we're realizing those already assets on ground, working with the developers. Where else does that happen in the world? So it's really time for us to now be able to see these visions in reality and be able to experience the, the beauty of Saudi and showcase to the world. 
Thank you, Nadine. And uh, we'll come to the end. I hope that uh, we had enough insight for all the audience, from developers, architects, suppliers at the same time, because I believe such vision need audience like that to support. Absolutely. Thank you for all of you. Thank you, and Laura. We are all yours. Thank you, sir.